Hey everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Kings of the Heart, Kings Holding Court Edition. And it's not only Kings Holding Court Edition, it's also Cypher 3 Edition. You know why? Because we got our sister Weena with us. Whoop, whoop. That's right, we got our sister <laughs> Weena with us today, W-I-T apostrophe U-S. Weena with us. They just apostrophe. rebranded me. The, the apostrophe, you know it's serious when you add that apostrophe. I, Absolutely. I am Tariq Omari Walton. That's my brother John Hart over there. How you doing, brother yo, John? Yo, yo, it's good. I'm feeling blessed. I'm energetic. And like I always say, I'm excited because we got Sister Weena with us. We got Weena with us. <laughs> and I'm Weena Cullins. Weena Cullins with us is with us Oh, today. yeah. That is, that is her name. Right. That is her, her official. Her official name yeah. is Weena Cullins. But, you know, right. we know her as Weena with us. What's exactly. going on, Ms. Weena? Oh, my gosh. You two really know how to get a Thursday started <laughs> off correctly. Well, we miss you. You know, we always have a good time when you're here with us. So we want to make sure that we bring the right energy and the yes. right information when you are here. We have to stay on our toes when Wena is with us. That is correct, because I'm all over this clinical thing that we're doing. And I'm excited to deliver some news that folks can use today. Let's do it. All yes, right. Let's do it. Well, like I said at the top, this is also the King's Holding Court edition. We're actually taking phone calls from our listeners, and we are going to answer them right here on today's show. And so why will we even bother waiting? Let's just get right into it with the first question. Let's get it. Hello. This message is for the King of Hearts. King of the Hearts. If a person's past trauma significantly contributes to the breakdown in relationships and marriages, what can be done to overcome the trauma from your childhood and past relationships? Thanks. Bye-bye. All right. So we got a question about trauma and childhood trauma and this effects on relationships. So who wants to start us off? Sister Weena. <laughs> Ball is in your start, court. <laughs> start, start, start us off, sister. Let's do it. So this caller is already insightful because she's connected the dots around the fact that something about past relationships or past experiences is rearing its head in the relationship. And she's not off from the answer. Self-awareness is the first step. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. To even realize that the behaviors that you're exhibiting in your current relationship have something to do with your past or some experiences or folks that you have interfaced with is the key to beginning to understand what to do next. Right. So the next nugget I want to drop is about triggers. Mm. It's very important when you realize that your partner or you are in a relationship where trauma is rearing its ugly head from the past, that you connect the dots in those moments where you're not getting along, having arguments, uh, disagreements, or feeling like something is off, that you realize it's a trigger. We teach couples a lot about how to notice when something that your partner is doing is actually creating a response in you or a feeling in you that doesn't work. It sends you to your scary place. And once you know your triggers, your partner can then learn your triggers and vice versa. And what we really want to do is make sure that you learn how to hold your feelings and your partner's feelings at the same time without feeling like they cancel each other out. So let's say, John, you and I are in a relationship and you say something that triggers me back to some past sexual abuse that's in my my life, in my history. First, I need to realize, oh, this is about that thing from the past. Right. And secondly, I need to be able to share that with you And then we need to have a discussion about how when you say that thing, it takes me back to a space and what we can do differently in that moment. This is really basic. And in therapy, we work a lot to help couples know how to really dissect that. But it's the start of how you deal with past trauma in your relationship with another person. Now I'm going to pass the baton. Yeah, no, I, I think I think you were spot on, Sister Wiener, with where I was thinking as well. I appreciate you bringing up awareness. I appreciate you uh, naming uh, 
triggers and the role that they play. Uh, I'm, I'm going to add to that. Um, and it's more also like a systemic thing. And it's we need to do better. We should always try to strive for creating safe spaces for these conversations. To be yes, better. yes. And usually, usually what happens, folks, is that when we are triggered and altercation occurs or an episode of escalation occurs, it's, yeah. not, it's not safe. So that ex that escalation, those reactive behaviors, those that negativity takes up so much air from the vulnerability that's needed to hold space for that trauma. And so sometimes when we're like, well, why can't we talk about this or how to our caller, like, how can we get over this? Well, you know, adding to Sister Weena's, you know, thoughts about awareness and, and triggers, we got to hold the space. And when I say hold space, we have to hold space for your traumas. And also to what Sister Weena said, we have to hold space for my traumas because it may right. be a good chance that you're you being triggered by something I did intentionally or unintentionally is probably going to trigger something from my past as well, right? And so this isn't the uh, trauma Olympics, okay? We're not going to sit here and, and compete, but we have to understand that when we're in a relationship, though, we're in a relationship, healing can occur if there is that emotional safety, if there is vulnerability. But I also want to say, and then I'll pass the baton over to Brother Reek, um, when I think about trauma, as Sister Wiener was talking, the first thing that came to my mind was compassion. You know, like we need wow. passion because we have all been traumatized, um, whether we were kids or, or last year. Some of us even like yesterday, we was traumatized. And so when you're in a relationship and you see your partner being triggered, you need to have that compassion. It's not enough. It's, it's offensive to say, well, get over it. That happened a long time ago. Have some compassion because there's a good chance that you are dealing with it and you are just not aware as well. So I want to share that as well. And, and, and Brother Rick, do you have any thoughts as well on this? Yeah, I was going to say that, you know, I think the important part, I think you both kind of hit on it too, um, being able to educate your mate about your trauma. You know, you, you're talking about making a safe space. Well, if that space is being created, being able to educate your mate about what actually happened to you and how you're being triggered, how you're being affected by these behaviors that you're seeing within the relationship. And so that they're clear on it. And so you can't expect anybody to tiptoe around you forever at all, which means at a certain point, you actually have to deal with the trauma. You have to get right. the help. You have to address what's happening with you. Anytime I talk to my clients about triggers, I say, okay, well, you recognize where the trigger comes from. So what are you going to do about the trigger itself? Because you can't expect people to just stop. You can't say to your mate, well, you know that triggers me, and then expect them to stop. No, you actually have to work on the trigger so that you're not being as triggered by it. So what's actually continuing to push that trigger? Yeah. So you have to get the proper help. You can't expect people just to stop. So, yeah, so the first thing, educate your, your mate. Make sure they understand how you're being triggered, what's actually occurring, what happened in the past to make the, the trigger um, live. But then make sure you're actually working on the trigger. You have to address that yourself. You have to address the trauma that happened and get the work done, the proper work done to make sure that the trauma isn't impacting your life in such a harmful way that it's also affecting your relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, right. I mean, and so we should take it a step further, right? Because the next logical question is, and what is that help? What does it look like? Mm -hmm. And it's on a spectrum. Oh, yeah. So it could be reading a self-help book in the comfort of your own home. It could be listening to podcasts on that topic. Right. It could be talking to a trusted friend, mm -hmm. a spiritual advisor. And of course it could be stopping by somebody's office for some therapy sessions mm -hmm. to really help you understand how deep the scarring is. Right. Yeah. Because sometimes you realize there's a trigger, but you don't know exactly how deep the wound is. Right. Right. Correct. And, and this could be something that's easily resolved. Or it could be something that opens the floodgates to some other things that you need to work on. But since you're not going anywhere in your relationship, you've got nothing but time, space and opportunity. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, what do you think about point. what do you think about? You know, we mentioned going to see a therapist. But what do you think about group therapy? You know, how helpful do you think group therapy is to addressing and, you know, getting over some of your traumas? I think that it's it's helpful. Um, I think that sometimes it can be difficult to find one at mm -hmm. the exact time that you're interested in joining one. Okay. 
Um, but but it's definitely helpful to hear other people's experiences and to glean wisdom and tips from them in addition to the therapist who's leading the group. I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I like the I like that idea. I think the other thing that comes to mind with it is um, if that's available, definitely tap into that because there's something about cultural and relational healing that group therapy really speaks to. And I, I, I also want to caution people that like, you know, to tap into that, you should be ready for that kind of form. It's mm-hmm. a completely different form than you sitting one on one with someone and talking with them. And I only say that because we are dealing with trauma. And, and sometimes some folks may not be ready to hear other people's trauma because like that could create some complexities for them. Um, right. So it's not it's not just black and white. Right. We want to create nuance about like how these things are helpful. And I, and I do appreciate us just like listing various things, man. Like, I, I really appreciate y'all because I think sometimes people get stuck where it's like some people be like, well, you know, therapy is just not for me. Right. Cool. But Sister Weena listed like a few other things that you can be doing that Indeed. doesn't involve therapy that could help uh, uh, push for healing and stuff like that. So I, I just want to appreciate that because I think sometimes people get stuck about like, well, it's not about like therapy or I don't want to do it. There's other things, folks. Right. Yeah. The internet has really unlocked a plethora of information on different topics that yep. we can access in the middle of the night, uh, at, on our lunch break, on the go in the car. You know, you can find small nuggets and pearls of wisdom in some of the most interesting and free places. Mm -hmm. So for those folks who don't have the funds to actually attend therapy or don't believe in therapy, there are absolutely ways that you can start the process of healing without necessarily tapping into that resource. Mm -hmm. One thing I did want to address too, you know, we talked about, how insightful the caller is about even being able to make the connection between the past trauma and the relationship. Right. What about for those people who have experienced trauma, but aren't making that connection? They don't realize that one of the reasons why they are being so triggered is because of trauma they experienced before in the past. Now, how do we help them make that connection? That requires a level of humility and understanding that in long-term romantic relationships and marriages, your partner is your mirror. Mm -hmm. And your partner is usually one of the only people that are qualified to actually show you your blind spots, your weaknesses, your shortcomings, and some of your triggers. So when you go into a relationship, understanding that because you are allowing yourself to be vulnerable and intimate, to see the good, the bad, the ugly, meaning your partner, then you know that your partner is going to be able to give you that feedback sometimes and is going to need to, and Mm -hmm. you need to actually be open to receive that because it might not come from you. You might not get that revelation or that insight on your own. Someone else might have to point it out to you. And also exploring your family. You know, I think when you begin to look at your own relationship issues and you have conversations with your parents or other people in your family and they bring up things that have happened to them in their relationships. And it kind of like you talked about that mirror. It reflects what's happening with you. I think that's the time for you to begin exploring. What did you see? What did you experience? And whether or not there were any traumatic experiences related. I mean, we repressed trauma all the time you know and so once you begin to see the parallels between your relationships and the relationship of other people in your family then that might be the time to kind of that might be the thing that opens your eyes to the fact that this may not just be unique to you but something that's been passed down through your family through different traumatic experiences um or just a trauma that you might have um experienced yourself during that period of time great point I, yeah, hey. I, I think that was really spot on. Um, and I also want to echo the humility part because um, we know being in this field, uh, I love what Weena said, and I've, I've used the mirror metaphor as well. I, I think it lands well in the context of relationships because this is someone who's with you so much of your time. You guys have spent 
you know, in so many different uh, 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 ways, right? So oh, who yeah. better, who better to reflect, hey, this is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm noticing. But I love the part about humility, man. I mean, I had to learn that even personally over the years, if I can even share, man. I mean, it, you know, because you think you, you know yourself well enough until, you know, and you think you are your own mirror. But like that lesson that, you know, Weena put out there about being humble, you should be able to take feedback. And as long as it's done in a very productive way, uh, in a loving right. way, you, you got to accept it, man, because I, I, I joke, I joke with my clients sometimes. I'm like, not just for your partner, but you yourself, who wants to live like that? Mm -hmm. You know, where wow. you're just you're just hurting and you're just displaying it in all kinds of right. ways. Like, and I, and I always have to I always have to normal, uh, not normalize, but I always have to validate for the person who is struggling and saying, I know deep down, you don't even like living like this. And you can hear them like, yes. And I'm like, good. Mm -hmm. Like that is the awareness part. That is the humility part. Okay, good. So can you be open and receptive to your partner sharing with you? Hey, I'm seeing this or, or this is what I see when you go through X, Y, and Z, because that's the next step. So I just really want to echo you know, both of your sentiments because it's so in line with that. Yeah, and yeah, it's helpful also to have a partner who is observant and, like you said, is compassionate towards what's going on with you and able to call that out when they do see it. You know, I notice that every time I do this, you respond in a, a very negative way. You seem triggered. What's going on? And then to right. be able to kind of explore that with you. But you need to have somebody who is going to be compassionate towards you, like John mentioned earlier, and create a safe space for you to be able to bring that up, but they need to be observant as well. You know, so it's helpful to have that. Well, oh, go ahead. Let me take this one step further so listeners can really understand how we enter into relationships. For many of us who are resilient and have come through some level of trauma, we have developed a level of self-reliance and independence that has allowed us to become successful and attractive to our actual mates. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. But the very things that have allowed us to be successful are the things that we absolutely have to break down as right. soon as we blend our lives with another person. Right. Yes. You can't yes. be independent, self-sufficient and self-reliant in a partnership. The two don't work together. That's right. So ultimately, when you start to bump heads around that self-preserving behavior, Sometimes we uncover that the trauma that you actually experienced in your past helped you to develop all of those coping mechanisms and all of those yes. resilient yes. qualities. Mm -hmm. yes. And, you know, it's not easy to say, I'm going to stop being self-reliant, independent, self-sufficient. Sometimes you have to get to the root of why you're doing that, which mm. is what this caller was talking about. Uh oh, I realized Reach. that a bad Reach. relationship or several bad relationships or abuse history or family dysfunction is showing up in my relationship. And that doesn't mean that the relationship isn't working well. And it doesn't mean that you're not a strong and amazing individual. You are a strong and amazing individual because some of that stuff happened to you, but now we have to explore it. Correct. See that? Well said. See that? That's, well that's said. why we got Weena with well us. Well said. That's why we got Weena well Cullen with, with us. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> that was, uh, <laughs> that's why we need to have With that. us. We need, man, look, we, we all we, need some we we, we, we we probably need to make a t-shirt, Brother Reek. <laughs> Weena, 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 Weena with us. With us. <laughs> 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 all right, y'all, let's, let's move on to the next question. Here we yes, go. Yes, yes. So my question is this, how do you know in a relationship that you are responding out of fear, trauma, or your intuition or instincts? So the example that was given was that if your partner is cheating on you or you suspect that person or you have been cheated on and then you're in a new relationship and a person says, you know, maybe they work late or whatever the situation and so now you have this feeling and you want to know, are you responding out of fear that they're going to cheat on you like the last person, out of trauma from what you experienced and felt from being cheated on before, or out of your intuition because humans have an intuition to tell us when something is wrong? That is my question. All right. 
What do you think? More trauma questions. So my question. We heard your question the first time. Thank you. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so what do you think? What do you think about that? I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, in, in a way it's like a variation of like the first question, right? right. Um, right. This one is very grounded in like the example of cheating, which is something that um, we're very uh, professionally, we, we've worked with a lot of couples really dealing with it. I, I, do I, we I, ever, boy, yeah, right? some Woo! cheaters out here. Right. Right. Um, the part about the instincts did grab me about the callers. Mm -hmm. Uh, question right like there's something there right there's this like we want to validate that so 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 our instincts were like we're born with them even animals have it like in the jungle it's a survival mechanism but when i was thinking about the caller's question i'm thinking about well sometimes our instincts can be out of whack right, right. for various reasons right and one of the things that gets our instincts out of whack is what experience mm -hmm. and if it's a traumatizing experience our meter is now kind of off right? right so it doesn't mean that like you should you know sometimes i have to tell clients like yeah i'm not saying like get rid of your instincts but you have to understand that your experiences as a human being has recalibrated your uh instinct meter to be a little shaky so right. meaning are you a little bit more sensitive to uh, your new partner who's traveling because why your previous relationship was with someone who was traveling and you ended up finding out that they were cheating. Yes. Right. It isn't it. Right. So we want to normalize that. Like that's all of us as human beings. And, and because that, that was a critical part because sometimes uh, I'm, I'm sure sister Wayne and brother Reek, like we have clients that it's like, but my intuition, my instincts, right. And we want people to be able to rely on them because that is the way to survive in this world that we live in. But but when I think about the caller, I went back to like what Sister Wiener was talking about. And I was like, well, are we aware? Are we having conversations? Have we told our partner in the new relationship, these are my triggers. This is where it's coming from. Um, you know, I asked for patience and compassion. Um, for now, for now, mm -hmm. I want to stress for now, these are things that I need to be reassured, you know, and or let's go to therapy. So I, I can, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't want to babble, but I just I'm just kind of responding because that was like a loaded question. There was so many so much there. So I appreciate the caller bringing it up because I know other callers. Um, some of our listeners have experienced something like that. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Wiener? You all see my brain working over here. Yep. <laughs> yep. Amazing question. It can be all three. Yeah. I was going to say the same yeah, thing. Yeah, right. That, that, I think that's what I was getting at. I'm like, yes. Yes, right. We're putting it concisely. Thank you, sister. You can be responding out of trauma, fear, and instinct or intuition at the same time. And they work together in concert to get us to the same destination, yep. which is that we need to explore how the relationship dynamics are affecting the way you feel. If you feel unstable, insecure, unsettled because your partner is traveling or working late, then that just opens up the door for you all to communicate about something that you absolutely need to communicate about from the get go, whether you've had a previous experience where Correct. you've been cheated on or not. Correct. This brings it back to some of the valuable work that we do in therapy to prepare couples for that next level of commitment. Yep. There are so many expectations, and we've talked about this on previous podcast mm -hmm. episodes, that we fail to meet, but we don't know that we miss the mark until we've hurt our partner. Right. Because Correct. we're not having Correct. those conversations. So the I'm working late, how's that going to impact the way we both feel in the relationship or when I go out of town and I say that I'm here for five days and we're not together, how is that going to impact the relationship? These are conversations everybody needs to have. Yeah. But I will say that there are some people because of trauma or simply because they're, they're not built to be trusting individuals. They start relationships giving their partner an F <laughs> or an E Mm -hmm. I'm from the Midwest. F is a failing grade and E is sometimes a failing grade here on the East Coast. Yeah. And you have to work your way up to an A. 
we have this fake natural assumption that you start with an A and then you work your way down to an F by losing trust. But that's not how everybody starts off in a relationship. Right. And for all different types of reasons, that's not how everybody starts off in a relationship. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was, I was thinking right along the same lines as you. I mean, it could be all three of them working in concert together. You know, recognize that your fear is going to be informed by your trauma, that your instincts are actually um, kind of like along the lines of what John was saying, are being formed out of that trauma. And so they're all working together, but they're all working together for one basic reason, to keep you safe, to keep you emotionally right. safe. And that's what you're trying right. to do. Right. Absolutely. But let's right. talk about attachment, Tyreek. Oh, man. Yep. Because yep. If yep. you don't have a history of secure attachment right. growing up with the people that you love, which means that you know that relationships are going to be stable, even if they're away from you, even if you go through bouts of um, turmoil, then you can come into your dating relationships feeling extremely insecure yep. when your partner has to travel or right. insecure when your partner is working late or insecure when your partner comments on how handsome or attractive another person is. Mm-hmm. So I'm just broadening this so that people can understand that you don't have to be cheated on to come into a relationship and have intuition, fear, trauma, one or all of them impact what makes you want to have a hard conversation with your partner because you feel unsettled yeah yeah but 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 it's all real i mean it's all real these are things that have impacted you these are things that um inform your decision making um going back to like what dr john said your instincts when i think about instincts i think about the things that come to you naturally like um um what is it um flee um fight or flight fight or flight Right. Yeah. Those are your instincts. Those are born within you. Correct. When you think about this, you can hone your instincts. You can, you know, through different experiences. Correct. Right. And so this is a a learned behavior. You know, the way that you respond to someone yeah. saying that they're not going to be available to you or they're going out of town or they're going to be working late. Those are things that, you know, the, the, the fear that you developed around there, that isn't necessarily instinctual. That's not fight or flight. Or, or maybe it may be if we want to take it to a whole other level. But usually those are learned responses. You've learned from being cheated on before or from not having those proper attachments as a child. You've learned these things. And so you've developed the instincts of um, being suspicious, of having doubt. But that wasn't a natural thing for you. You've grown into that. And so just like you've honed your instincts to um, sniff out when somebody may be doing something behind your back, there's more of an intellectual side to that where you actually have to look it up. Or your, your, the fear um, that you're feeling is, again, based in the reality that you've gone through before, that trauma. Yeah, no, I I think it's spot on again, and I, and it, and again, it's like that's that's why I always have to like help clients to know that like it's not black and white. It's mm-hmm. we just have to sit down and recalibrate because you know because because sometimes when it goes badly, then sometimes clients will question themselves and be like, you know, I I shouldn't trust my instincts or. Right. You know what I mean? And it's right. like, no, it's not about that. Your instincts are there naturally to protect you. Right. Like Brother Rick said, we just really need to hone it. We need to recalibrate it, mm-hmm. right? It's kind of like when your car is out of whack, you go get that tuned up, right? Right. We have to get better, sharper, but we need more clarity, right? And I think that, again, that's the beauty about going to therapy or or engaging in some of the things that Sister Wiener was talking about is because when we're out of whack, we see things differently, right? We, right. we all have studied perception. Perception is tied to so many different things and experiences is one of them. Trauma is one of them, right? right. So we, let, let's definitely call that. And I'm glad we're having a conversation about that because, um, you know, the other thing that comes to mind um, as you both were talking is that um, it's like doubt. Right. So like you, you trust your instincts and then when it backfires, 
um, in so many different ways, you, you become doubtful, you, you know, and that's why sometimes people are yeah. sitting on their couches and they're like, well, I don't really know anymore. I can't trust myself. You, know, you we've heard those kinds of sentiments. Mm-hmm. I can't trust myself. You Absolutely. Know? And, 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 and so like that also resonated with me that like, that's why we have to find clarity, but that's also, that also speaks to how complicated trauma is y'all mm-hmm. very yeah. complicated. Yeah, and that trust factor, just like Weena said too, that that whole issue around trust is so major. Are you just having an issue with trust in general? Is it really about what's happening in your relationship, or do you right. just not trust? <laughs> you know, we have to talk about that. All right, we're gonna be we're running short on time, so I want to get to the next question. And here we go. Good afternoon. This message is for the King of Hearts. Hello. Hello. Is it wise or not to confess to your partner that you cheated? And can a relationship survive infertility? Thank you. All right. Is it wise or not to confess your infidelity, your cheating ways to your mate? Is it wise to confess that? What What do we think, uh, Cypher 3? Wow. Let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about lifestyle okay. versus uh, isolated instances. It's mm. hard to say in general that it's right or wrong to confess infidelity because sometimes the confessor is confessing for their sake, yes. for the sake of clearing Correct. their own conscience, Correct. and therefore heaping a whole hot plate of steaming mess onto their partner's plate, right? Um, And so because of that, we would have to look at your motives for confessing and be ready to accept the consequences, whatever they may be, when your partner is confronted with the indiscretion. But uh, what's really important for the cheater in this case to really explore is why the infidelity occurred. Was this an isolated instance, which may have been triggered by lapse in judgment, weakness or vulnerability, because there is a larger issue in the relationship that you all have not been able to work out and you've sought an escape through infidelity or is this a lifestyle choice? Right, right. Mm -hmm. And there are two very different camps of cheaters. You got folks who come into relationships knowing from the get-go that monogamy is not necessarily what they've signed up for. Their partner has signed up to be monogamous, but they intend to be in an open relationship and whatever they can get away with. Perpetrating. (laughs) Is what they could get away with. Perpetrating. Right. Say it. Say it. Yep. Right. So I just want to start there because there are so many different reasons why infidelity occurs. But as soon as you land on my couch or Tyreek's couch or John's couch, we're going to want to help you understand what the actual problem is in the relationship that caused the symptom of cheating. Mm -hmm. Cheating is the cough or the runny nose of a cold. Mm -hmm. The actual virus is usually something like neglect, correct, feeling disrespected, feeling unsupported in your relationship, uh, going through the dark years of parenting, Mm -hmm. handling your partner's selfishness, or mental health illnesses. There are so many reasons why people find themselves vulnerable and end up cheating. And it's really, really important that we look at that in relationship to telling your partner that you've been unfaithful. Right. Yeah. 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 No, I, I, I think, I think that was a great way to start, like understanding the lifestyle and stuff like that. Um, I, I think that's so spot on. And I also think like that doesn't get talked about often, right? Like what form of cheating, what kind of cheating is, is kind of happening. Um, and I, and I've dealt with both, uh, I, I, you know, with clients, um, I think the other thing to add, and I want to uplift what sister Winnie was saying, cause I, I was going to say that as well. It's, I, I think it's easy to hyper-focus on the cheating 
And our job as marriage and family therapists is we know that that is not the source of of it, right? Like mm-hmm. the act itself will get dealt with and accountability needs to be addressed because that is actual harm. So, right. you know, we do talk about that. But when you talk about like what's underneath, like the virus, right? Like those are the important things. And there are steps that lead up to infidelity. So I always say like, look, people don't wake up one day and just start cheating. I, I mean, I mean, I may be wrong. You know, the brother and sister on the line can really check me on this. No, you're right about, about, about that. Yeah. You're right about that. You know, that. People, people do not wake up and say, you know what? Right. Like today is the day. I'm right. When you look happen. back, when you look back, you see a pattern, you see things happening that lead you to the incident. Right. And sometimes our job is to slow down the couple, even though they're hurting, and to say, folks, there are actually steps and precursors to this, you know, happening. And 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 so when you think about like confessing, right? I, I, I the other part that comes to my mind mind is also um, you want it to go both ways, like you know, like how would you feel and and what would be needed. Mm-hmm. But Sister Ween is correct. Like, what is the purpose of disclosing? I've right. had to have those conversations directly right. with the person who committed the infidelity. Like, I got to pull them to the side one on one and be like, "You need to walk me through because I need to be clear of what your intentions are." Because if you know what I mean, and mm-hmm. and I think it's fair. And so, um, I definitely want to add that because like because once it comes out you you have to be ready but um we've all talked about this before both on the record and off the record but it's a systemic problem i mean that's why i love what we just said Mm -hmm. this is so meaning meaning both parties are systemically involved with the cheating if that makes sense because there were events and relational situations that kept spiraling out of control where one person perpetrated violated and, and stuff like that. So I just want to be clear here that even in therapy, a great therapist would hold the perpetrator accountable, hold space for that to really address the actual harm. But as we know, we have to transition into finding out that virus and getting the specifics about the virus so we can clean it up. Mm-hmm. And, and that's not to put all the blame just squarely on the shoulders of the person who perpetrated the cheating. Correct. Because right. I've had clients in here who've actually come in and say, you know what, I realized the, pro- the role I played in yeah. my mate stepping out on me. And so I recognize that and I want to work on that, too. Not to say that they're guilty of actually doing the cheating, but they see you're right. It's a systemic issue. And they did play a role in that, too. But to kind of piggyback also on what Wiener was saying, you know, to me, it all comes down to, again, why are you confessing? Are you confessing because you're feeling guilty or are you confessing because you're afraid that you might get caught? And there's two totally different reasons for confessing. Are you trying to get ahead of it? Or are yeah. you just are you just sitting with so much guilt that you don't want to sit with anymore? So you want to put it on your partner. You know, either one of those aren't fair. <laughs> Two important points here as we kind of wrap things up. And I hope I don't forget them because I'm getting older. Um, but wiser. Go ahead. Girl. Yeah. Oh, my God. You just spoil me. So with your compliments. <laughs> don't get used to it. Uh, this guy. <laughs> this guy. This Let guy. me just say for the repeat offenders though you do have relationships that have this level of immaturity or an underdeveloped piece of it at the start of it where there is one partner who came in committed and absolutely monogamous and you have a rogue or wayward partner who hasn't yet adopted the attitude that when something goes wrong in the relationship you can't just go out and Correct. tap that find or, a replacement yeah, yeah right. find a, a, yep. a stand in mm-hmm. right yep. Yep. and so we do see those relationships where you have a partner who is faithfully standing by and this is the third or the fifth yeah. incident of catching yep. someone and the root cause of it is immaturity oh yeah we yep. call it selfishness but selfishness is immaturity. Mm-hmm. Yep. So at the root of it, even if the immaturity is about we haven't learned to communicate our concerns, our disappointments, our frustrations with each other in the relationship, mm-hmm. it all does stem back to something about that relationship is under functioning or immature, hasn't yet been developed. And so that's really important. Tyreek, you said something really important, but I need to think about it a little bit more before I, I actually comment on that. But 
Okay. Well, you made a really good point. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. I try to make important points wherever I can, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but look, you guys, <laughs> um, we're going to expect me to come back with that point uh, the next time she's here for the Cypher 3. Yeah. So make sure yeah. you write that down if it comes back to mind. Because I want to know what that I was, was right about teaser. for once, you know. Right. Um, <laughs> it's very rare. Very, very rare. But anyway, that's the show for us today. We know where can our listeners find out more about you or connect with you? Oh, so easy. Check me out at WeenaCullins.com. That's W-E-E-N-A-C-U-L-L-I-N-S.com. Not Weena with us. So you can call me Weena with us. And follow uh, that's me That's just on... for us. That's just for us. <laughs> right. Follow me on Instagram at Weena Cullens L-C-M-F-T. Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. And check me out on YouTube at Weena Cullens. Uh, I have a YouTube page where I have some segments called One Quick Question where... I'm answering questions from people who actually have called their email. Okay. All right. Nice. What about Dr. you, Dr. John? What about for you, man? Where can people find out more about you? Man, you can always hit up www.kingsoftheheart.com. Check out the page. You know, we're all over SoundCloud, all the different platforms, right? You get to hear our voices, doing it for the people. Right. And also feel free to, you know, uh, check me out at rccmaryland.com. Doing some great clinical work in the area. Um, Facebook, all that stuff. Dr. John Hart, you know, I'm there. Real easy to find me. I'm all over the place, man. Brother Reek, what about you, man? How, how can we find you, brother? You can find me on all the different um, social media platforms at Tari Gamari or Tari Gamari Walton. You can find me at my website, TariGamariWalton.com, KingsOfTheHeart.com, ViewsAndVibes.com. I'm everywhere you are. Because I got so much to say, so much to share, and a whole lot of stuff I used to talk about way back in the day. That's still and even just hanging out on a random corner sometimes, right? <laughs> sometimes. Not as much as I used to. Not I got other responsibilities now. But you know, but yeah, you might find me out there somewhere. So your, your local cafe, you know, you just never know where you might run into me. But yeah, that's about it. Anyway, guys, thank you guys for listening. This has been Kings of the Heart. Kings Holding Court Edition slash Cypher 3 edition as well. You know, we just had to nope. bring it all together for you at all one time. Together. Anyway, all that together. has been the show. Make sure you guys check us out again next week, and we will see you guys later. Have a good one.